Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Ronan back at you again with another video. Um, if this is your first time on my channel, uh, what I do here is a lot of fan art of uh, comic book stuff I like. I also talk about comics and just kind of all around comic book related stuff. Um, I'm an illustrator, comic book artist. I have my own um, online comic called The Heavy. You can check it out in the description below. Um, if you like, you know, sci fi, militaristic, action, drama, that's the kind of comic it is. So, uh, Check that out. Um, and so, like I said, what I do is uh, mostly uh, I ink and illustrate, you know, comic books I like while I kind of talk about them. Um, not necessarily review because if I'm talking about the comic book, I think it's dope. You know what I mean? So it's not, I wouldn't call it a review. But anyways, uh, today I'm going to be doing a really cool comic book called Hard Boiled done by uh, Jeff Darrow and Frank Miller. Um, this video was a little bit. Uh, different like I say uh, with one of the other videos this is um, I'm kind of going back and getting some footage that I threw away because uh, I, I just don't want to throw it away um, so this one's not going to be sped up it's going to be slow and I'm just going to jump forward in time a little bit also Premiere Pro kind of updated in the middle of me making this video so the audio is a little bit weird it's in certain spots every now and then uh, it may not render out the file like that. I'm, I'm recording this before I render the file. So it might be fine, but I don't know. But if there's a little bit of funny stuff there, just forgive me this one video. All right, I'll catch you at the end. Peace. So today I'd like to talk about one of the coolest comics ever, Hard Boiled. Uh, now this comic pairs two great creators, uh, Jeff Darrow and Frank Miller. Um, now Frank Miller needs no introduction. Uh, he's a legend, you know, he's the writer and artist who uh, did Dark Knight Returns, arguably the greatest superhero comic ever written. It kind of uh, ties with Watchmen for that title. Um, I personally like Dark Knight Returns better. I think it's a, you know, it's a better comic to me. But uh, that's my opinion. I'll fight you over it. I don't care. But he's also done other iconic comic books such as uh, 300 sin city and uh batman year one so this dude's a legend jeff darrow's no slouch either he just has never really worked on mainstream comics he's not really um a superhero kind of artist he's done a lot of conceptual art um and storyboards for movies as well as working extensively in animation uh he also has his own creator own comic called shaolin cowboy um but this is his first published american work uh that I know of uh, and I mean it really makes an impact Miller and Daro won um, an Eisner Award for the for best writer artist team for this comic uh, and the two would also team up later for the comic big guy and Rusty the boy robot which feels like a nice companion piece to horror boy as it's literally the polar opposite of this comic comic book and I'll be a episode on that one as well So um, I'm going to be concentrating more on Jeff Darrow than Frank Miller in this video because uh, honestly, he's been a major influence on my work. And also, I mean, Frank Miller's Frank Miller. You, who doesn't know who he is? I, I've got plenty of videos down the pipeline for him. Um, but one of the things that I'll that I'm concentrating on Jeff Darrow for is because this artwork is insane. I don't engage in hyperbole. Uh, when I say this, that this is probably his art is probably the most detailed comic art I've, I've ever seen. I mean, there might you might see a piece of art that has more detail in it, but not on a consistent, continuous basis in every panel, on every page, in every comic. I mean, I shudder to think how long it must take to do this, and yet. All of his work is this way. You'll never find anything that is not hyper detailed. And I mean, I don't know if there's a comic term for it, but uh, in painting, there's a kind of term called horror vacui, where every inch of a painting will be covered. There's like no space and some detail. And um, I would say that this comic book is kind of like that. It's like you can't see everything in a panel at once. You have to look at it multiple times and almost like look at different quadrants of the panel to be able to actually see everything. You're never going to catch it all because there's just too much detail.
and um his storyboarding uh, ability really comes through in his work um as artists a lot of times we tend to struggle in certain areas and for every artist it's different so some people might be perspective some people might be vehicles or technology or machines some people might be clothing how the folds are um everyone struggles with something different but jeff darrow doesn't seem to struggle with anything he has a mastery and i don't like using that term but he has a mastery pretty much of everything he doesn't shy away from drawing anything you know sometimes his artists will go oh, can i figure out a different way to draw that because that's just that's my weak my weak spot but he doesn't do that he, he doesn't have a weak spot he draws everything uh especially like technology which is extremely difficult to do when you're constantly drawing hyper detailed machinery and technology um and he's just doing it all the time so like i mean especially you can see the detail in things like where the cars crash into each other often um i mean he draws every nut and bolt and in the engine and on the car uh and just the way the metal folds in on itself it's just it's insane um also um what makes his art even more difficult is he has he's very much influenced by european artists like mobius uh i think he actually even worked in france uh for the early part of his career but what i mean by the european style is kind of like um i, I actually draw in that style in, in that what i call the open line style without a lot of uh cross hatching or shading or shadows and that makes it kind of harder to draw because you can't hide anything you can't hide any imperfections uh, in the art you can't just put a big shadow over something that you don't want to draw um, and also it makes the coloring even more crucial um, but you got a good colorist it doesn't matter but with with uh, Jeff Darrow it's interesting because his style is so detailed you kind of have to color it flat um, because once you start to render in a lot of shading and shadow and stuff with your colors uh, you don't your eyes tend to, to gloss over all the cool detail so it's actually um, this comic book is very flat in its coloring and um, I think the colorist Claude Legree did a really good job because this is kind of a hard tightrope to walk. You know, it had to be flat enough to see the detail, but not so flat. Flat, flat basic coloring is really hard to get right. It's it's very deceptive. So I think that's the most amount of time I've ever spent talking about the art of a comic book, but I kind of felt like this warranted it. So uh, let's get into the actual comic itself. So let's get into the comic. The comic takes place in a bleak near future Los Angeles where capitalism runs rampant. While this has been done to death, Harbaugh is more off, more of like a satire and it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, Frank Miller wanted the series to be, uh, the, the, the comic to be very serious, but he did it in the more, the, the old Stanley Marvel way, which is the writer will write out a couple of paragraphs or maybe like an outline and he lets the artist fill in a lot um, of the gaps and so when he got some of the the art back and he saw how absurd jeff darrow did some of the work he just said well this can't be a serious comic book you know so our protagonist is a guy named carl seltz he's a uh straight-laced insurance investigator or is he <laughs> He's actually a cyborg assassin working for the Wilford Home Appliance Company. His name is Nixon. I love also like I love the idea that he works for like this old fashioned home appliance company that makes actually uh, assassin robots. Um, but his name's Nixon. He's he's he doesn't know he's a, a, a assassin cyborg, uh, but he's also the only hope for the robot underclass in society. Um, these robots have been sabotaging his program in order to bring him over to their side in the hopes of freeing themselves from their human overlords. So the story is wafer thin, but it's it's supposed to be. Um, the writing is understated and uh, it's giving you just the right amount of information. Most of the story is like show, don't tell. It's very much leaning on uh, Jeff Darrow's amazing pencils. And also you can tell like at this time in 93, there was something called the decompressed storytelling style, which was kind of in vogue. And um, 
it 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 doesn't lean a lot on exposition or uh, info dumps or anything like that. Uh, it just lets kind of like the story play out as long as it takes. Um, there is a kind of an info dump in the middle where she explains to Nixon what he is, this this robot that he's chasing. But um, for the most part, it doesn't really uh, throw a lot of information at you. It just it lets the story play out and you get to see what's happening. Uh, kind of from the protagonist's eyes, you know. So I also feel like uh, Frank Miller went really out of his way to be able to draw scenarios where like um, Darrow could just draw the craziest stuff, the, you know, the most insane action, car crashes, explosions, um, everything you can imagine. And um, the comic book is hyper violent. I mean, it's probably <laughs> one of the most violent comics I've ever seen. Um but again it's kind of it's it's kind of satirized a little bit so um like i said you don't you don't really you're not really grossed out by it that much because it's so unrealistic so uh needless to say this comic book should be read or more likely or, or more accurately looked at <laughs> um but yeah so i don't want to make this video longer than it has to be i was trying to get a, a clean 10 minutes but that's just not gonna happen but anyways um this comic book is continuously in print um it also comes in a really cool large format like 9 by 12 or something like that and you can get it in a, a bunch of different formats you can even get a black and white version so i really uh encourage you to check it out because i mean this is just the most insane comic uh, with the most insane art you've ever seen. So in my illustration, I didn't uh, put as much detail as he did in there and that he puts in his illustration because uh, I'm not insane. Uh, I mean, I am kind of insane, but not as crazy as he is. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. Um, I'll be posting this on my Instagram, uh, along with other illustrations and stuff. So uh, why don't you go over there and give me a follow. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, Jeff Darrow is a major influence on me as an artist and, um, I just love hardball and I'll be doing more about with these guys. Cause, uh, like I said, they did, um, big guy and rest of the boy robot. I got a video of that upcoming. And, um, also uh, probably Shaolin Cowboy. I'll be doing some stuff with that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so look forward to more of that. Uh, next time I think I'm gonna have, um, next video is probably gonna be another art vlog. So come back for that. And, um, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And, um, I'll catch you in the next video. All right. Peace.